Hello. Happy Thursday. Just out here enjoying some sunshine on this wonderful, beautiful, sunny day. It's not very hot, but it's nice for here. Northern California, I guess you would call it. But I'll walk inside. Been down here tootling around. <clears throat> Not much really has uh, has changed, but sort of wanted to make a video. Thought it would be fun. Um, pretty much got the little swingy diggy interface dialed in. Dialed in. <clears throat> Got the, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, moves. It moves now. I guess it always moves, but um, yeah, you can sort of do it free handed. Got a magnet on the back side of there, and it just like latches onto the steel enclosure. And that worked pretty cool. It's just like a, nothing fancy. It's not even like a neodymium or whatever those things are. Just a run-of-the-mill magnet with a countersunk hole in it. And I think it's like 10 pounds. And, um, you know, this little monitor keyboard setup, it's not super heavy, but it's not super light. And it's also like a big lever, you know, on it with the magnet being so far in there. So it got a, a stronger magnet coming, but you get the idea. So that's pretty sweet. Oh, the hinges. I almost forgot the hinges. Uh, the last video, I think we might have mentioned uh, the hinges were plastic. Wooty woo. They had a bunch of spring in them. They were fine hinges. They would have worked. But these uh, these seem to be a little better. Uh, made by the same company, Southco. They are all metal aluminum. So a little more stiff. And I think they're twice as, uh, twice as heavy on the you know, friction, they're like 15 pounders instead of seven. So it, it works, it's cool. So I got that, super sick. Uh, let's check something else out. Here's the little something something. You're looking at the way covers for the Y axis, you know, the ones that get smushed up there. Um, so these are the ones that we had made on um, Alibaba or uh, whoever, whatever the Chinese, Chinese make stuff for you site is. Uh, so yeah, I mean, these are cool, custom, whoop de whoop but it's just, it's a poor design. I mean, there's no way around it. It just is what it is. And, you know, chips and stuff get caught in here. And then as they compress, you know, to their limits, then the chips can like cut and grind and, you know, chew away at the bellows. You know, they're a disposable item. They're viewed as a disposable item, but it would be nice to, you know, try to get as much life out of them as you can. So I've been uh, messing around with a couple uh, ideas and I got some uh, 16th inch uh, Buna N. I think it comes with like 12 inch sheets and it's nice and flexible and chemical resistant and was toying around with the idea. Here's a little narrower piece that fits in there better. Of making a just sort of like a rubber. Uh, what do you call that? A loincloth, you know, like the uh, like an Indian would wear, or maybe. Yeah, I don't know. That might have not been politically correct, but I digress. So got a piece of rubber. It'd be cool. A little loincloth, you know, keep the chips off or. You know, and it should be easy to, you know, lift up and blow out every once in a while. So cool piece of rubber. How do I fix it? Um, so I found a piece of, uh, it was just a piece of stock uh, uh, O1 tool steel. Um, and I bent it up into like a spring clip kind of thing. And then I hardened it with a torch, just all willy-nilly. And uh, it actually works pretty cool. So... 
I'm not sure if we're gonna use it, but the idea is the rubber goes here. And now uh, let's scoot in and get a better closer upper shutter. Pardon the uh, jiggly camera, freestyle. That's how we do it here. This will be much better. So yeah, this is uh, now hard and springy. It's not spring steel, but it's got some toughness and got a little finger bent on either side. And then I sort of bent some spring in the middle, if you can see that. And the idea is that the 16th rubber, you know, would go up something like that. And then this clip, you just sort of open it up right here and listen for it. One, two, three. Oh, it didn't clip. There it went. So yeah, now that thing is like on there super duper. Like I could yank on this really hard. And uh, if you want to remove it, unspring it, comes right off. Want to put it back on? Come on. There you are. You get the idea. I don't know, it might be silly. Probably won't even use it, but I like making, you know, fun little fun little things like that. So let's see if I can figure this camera out. What is going on right now? So slow. So yeah, you now you can see the how it sort of clips around this edge. So all right, enough with this. Sick! Got the last little lock line valve in. These things are pretty fun. They're sort of like Legos. I found myself clipping them together and you know making different configurations. And, uh, yeah, what can I say? I'm like a child. This was the other thing I did. I drilled a couple holes and added another solenoid for the uh, air blaster, mister, whatever you want it to be up on the head of the machine. So that's one thing, and I think you still need to put a hole, I'm gonna add a little on off switch there for the, the computer. So I think that's like the last of that kind of stuff as well with the, um, with this interface right here, that's everything's all pretty much spoken for. So, um, one more thing. So another another machiney thing that has to happen, uh, or that needs to be redone or modified because the linear rails. Um, the the table sits don't quote me on this <laughs> it's like 100 120 150 thousandths higher than what uh out of the box grizzly table comes so if you think about that that would uh make the ball nut for the x need to be longer because the screw is going to be you know physically higher up so uh, need to make a new a new mount for the uh, X ball nut. So the idea, or what we did on the Y, you could see, um, made a steel one. You normally see them out of aluminum. I don't know why you would, I mean, it seems silly to make this out of aluminum, but uh, you know, it probably works just fine. Anyways, basically make something like this so it's you know taller and more beefy. And you could see on this particular one, uh, there's actually, you know, there's an oil port that comes in the side of here. There's a, an O-ring and like a port, and then it comes through here, so it seals it. So there's a fitting that actually pumps grease down through here and then out and then into the uh, ball screw. So um, we'll do that for uh, here. I'm going to go to make the new one. Um, other than that, I think, I think that's about it for right now. I think I've stretched it long enough. It's 
It's been fun as always. A little shout out, my cuz down in Sacramento, G-Boy, Garrett, my little homie. What's up if you're watching? Keep it up. You're a good boy. Um, yeah. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, the next time, man. Cheers. I almost forgot to share. Um, as always, the crowning piece of the end of a part is the chamfers, man. Is the chamfers. So, uh, yeah, it was sort of fun. I like doing chamfers. They're fun. Put, uh, put them all the way around the button thing. I think it ended up being like 60 thousandths or something. Yeah. It's the little things in life, man. What is that? A dent? Oh, this is not okay.